One of these important um, signaling proteins is the SARC protein. So this was one of the first oncoproteins identified and it became apparent when people looked at the function of SARC that it was a tyrosine kinase. All right. So typically biologists had identified kinases before. A, a kinase, as you know, is, a, is an enzyme function that adds a phosphate group to another residue on another protein. So typically we looked at serine and threonine as being the amino acid residues that can be phosphorylated. But this new kind of kinase that had been identified phosphorylates tyrosine residues. Okay, and that's distinct from the other kinds of kinases that had been identified as being involved in glycolysis and other, you know, metabolism. Okay, so these are unique kinases that are involved in signaling pathways. And the first one to be identified was the SARC protein. And by understanding SARC, it gave biologists a clue of how these signaling um, pathways occur. So um, we'll look at some of the evidence um, and some of the experiments that were done on the SARC protein. So it probably comes of no surprise to you that SARC was originally found in a viral sequence and then it was identified as being a human sequence picked up by the virus. Okay, so then when you studied the SARC protein from a human um, genome, um, it was identified as being an important protein, an important oncoprotein. Okay, so SARC, um, again, it doesn't matter, but you know, it's an amino acid of 533 amino acids. Um, and when um, you look at um, mutations in, in SARC, some of the changes that occur to those cells once SARC is mutated is that you can get um, a different cell shape, you can get um, inappropriate pumping of glucose through the plasma membrane, you can get a, a, a change to the anchorage um, dependency of cells so that cells become anchorage independent, and um, you can lose this thing called contact inhibition, meaning that no, lo no longer do you get cells growing, cell growth restricted by the neighbor, but they can start to grow um, inappropriately. And this is all characteristic of tumor cells. So changes to the SARC protein is able to drive some of these um, processes that are observed in tumor cells. So again, SARC is one of these proteins that is hit in this multi-step process. So the question is, how can a change to a single protein cause these large phenotypic changes, these big changes that you can observe in cells? How can it be caused by a, a mutation in a single protein. So um, it's been identified that SARC is a tyrosine kinase. So how does that cause these phenotypic changes? So we know that phosphorylation is the addition of a phosphate to an amino acid residue. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so um, so SARC was able to phosphorylate other proteins and the experiments they did to establish that is shown here. They identif identified SARC, got no idea what the target of SARC is, you don't know what proteins have been phosphorylated, so you get this artificial substrate. So you get an antibody that binds to SARC and then somewhere along that protein sequence, this antibody sequence, SARC will phosphorylate it. So it became clear SARC phosphorylates other things on tyrosine residues. Okay, so we, we knew that SARC was a tyrosine kinase. SARC itself is phosphorylated. So the question is, is SARC autophosphorylating itself or is something else phosphorylating SARC? Okay, for this story it doesn't really matter. Um, I can tell you now that SARC autophosphorylates itself. So one of the targets of SARC is itself. Okay, as well as other cellular proteins. So, um, so SARC autophosphorylates itself and that helps SARC regulate itself. Um, so people identified that the um, SARC protein kinase can phosphorylate up to 50 different proteins within the cell. So hence, if you make the SARC kinase more active, it's going to inappropriately phosphorylate 
many other proteins in the cell. So you can have a small change to one protein causing activation of many other proteins through phosphorylation. Because phosphorylation can turn um, some proteins on or it can turn some proteins off. And it's that inappropriate switching driven by SARC that causes the tumor, causes inappropriate cell growth. So SARC is known to phosphorylate a whole range of downstream targets. So prior to, under, to, to the discovery of SARC, most cellular kinases were known to phosphorylate serine and threonine. Okay? So SARC became this unique factor that phosphorylates tyrosine. And the experiment they did to show this is just that they, they looked at, um, I, I don't know if I need to exp explain this to you, but this is just looking at proteins on a two-dimensional gel that have been stained, and it's looking at um, normal proteins um, that have been stained on this technique. And then when you look at transformed cells, you can see there's, um, they've been able to identify changes to the normal expression of proteins. So these proteins here are present in both types. This protein here is overexpressed in the transformed cells. And these proteins here are proteins with a tyrosine residue that's been phosphorylated. So in these um, cells, they identified a whole bunch of proteins that are phosphorylated by this tyrosine kinase. Okay.